So yeah, th th this tutorial is really uh, very step by step. But when I say step by step, you will see it's uh, is, is millimeter by millimeter step uh, uh, tutorial, so that you really can understand the uh, I hope the, the role of each component, why it's here, uh, what is what is this component doing, and what its role and what its impact uh, in, in the in the in the scene and in the simulation. So. Yeah. First, when you when you so when you are uh, launching Sofa, what, uh, uh, what what will appear, uh, once you compile it, of course, and soon, as I said, there will be binaries for that, so no need to compile it. Uh, so w once you once you launch Sofa, you will have uh, such a, such a window. So uh, basically, graphical interface with here all the visual aspects. You will have the the, um, uh, the visualization of the graph, so the description of the scene available here. You have all the different options that you can guess that you can find using the usual uh, uh, help uh, help option, and you can uh, uh, so you, you find all these the information that we are going to explain, may hope, hopefully a bit less detailed in the on the for, uh, on the on the website, but do not hesitate later to, to visit the website if you want to have more information. There is a, a, a documentation online. So uh, so far is so as I said described by so yeah. It's maybe not the, the, the best color for this uh, of, of font that we could have uh, cho chosen at least today. Uh, so, so so far, it's a graph, and the graph can be described either using Python, as I said, uh, we are using it a lot, but uh, yeah, we are also using XML files. Those XML files so are describing this uh, this uh, this uh, this node uh, node uh, node nodal structure. So what you can see here is that you have this, the root node that I was talking about uh, previously, and then you, you have different components in it. So we'll go through the, those different components and understand the role of each of those components. So here it's just visual style. I would say it's, uh, it's uh, some visual, uh, depending on what you want to visualize, but that's not very important. Here, the default animation loop, that's what I talked about previously, you know, the component which is going to rule the simulation, saying, which is going to say when we need to compute the constraint, I mean, the, for example, the collision if there is some, or when, we, when the time step is going to, to say, okay, let's, do, let's go to the next step, when, when it's going to occur the solving step, so that's really what is going to rule the simulation, and that's what when, when, a, when a compulsory component, if you forget it, if you are forgetting it in the simulation, it will itself uh, be added uh, to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the scene, so to the, to the graph. So let's see what we can put inside this, uh, inside this simulation node. So as I said, if you want to make uh, a simulation, you, you need to have a description of your, of your object, and uh, you, you, you need to have your degrees of freedom uh, defined in your, in your simulation. So you'll have to have what, what we call a mechanical object. So the, the name is still called mechanical object, but now it can be actually electrical object or a thermal object or any kind of field that you want to simulate. But as I said, historically, uh, Sofa was made for mechanics, so all your degrees of freedom are stored in this mechanical object. Then. So yeah, as I said here, that can be used for any kind of physical phenomenon. So if we yeah, I'll go, I'll go here because otherwise I don't see the, the screen. So that, that's what we see here. We have one node, the mechanical unit, describing the position uh, of, your, of your object. Here, we define a template rigid. So we'll have a rigid body, and a rigid body is made of uh, three degrees of freedom and uh, four, four degrees, uh, making, making a quaternion, so an orientation. So here, we just have one node. And then we are defining the position of this node, and, 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 and we just ask to, to, to show this node in the simulation. So what's, what's going to happen? Uh, what, what's going to happen uh, if, uh, if we run this simulation? Uh, so uh, Fred, Fred will do that for us. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, a, the, that's a tiny box, but uh, yeah. so, so so uh, 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 okay. Uh, so can you so if you if you run the simulation? Yeah, there is basically nothing happening. So you, maybe it's uh, I would say I would say it could it could look uh, abnormal. But if if you look if you look here, we have no solvers, and we have on top of that here no mass. If we want to, to see something mechanical happening, 
we need maybe some gravity or we need to even, we need to define additional components so first let's see solvers because if we do not define solvers basically nothing will happen you you, will have, you can maybe visualize something but of course it will be static nothing will happen on this uh, on, on this object so on the scene we had here we will have some uh, we'll have we'll have some some additional components so can you show show, show us maybe the, the second scene And what, what will be added here in the simulation, there, 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 there will be mainly two components for solvers. You will have first uh, the uh, OD solver and the linear solver. In that case, here we are choosing a, a layer implicit scheme, and this scheme then is going to compute a, a, a linear system. And this linear system will be then solved uh, iteratively this time here, because it's a conjugate gradient. Uh, will be solved uh, using the CG linear solver co component. So, again, if we do the same simulation as, as before with the, with the solvers, nothing will happen. So there will be a computation, but nothing will happen because you have no mass defined. Even if you have a gravity defined in the simulation, so here you define the gravity and the time step on, on the root node. But if you didn't define a mass, of course, the object won't fall. So we define a mass here. So that we, we define in, for that case here uh, the feature, so it's called total mass, is defined here to four. And if we simulate it, this time we will see something, we should see some, something moving. <coughs> the, the point is basically just falling. Maybe we can stop here. It was very complicated till now. Uh, and it was a lot of mechanics. I'll now go home. So uh, yeah, let's go a bit further. Um, we had a point. But how do we do to you know, simulate something a bit more complicated? First, we want maybe a bit more complicated in terms of geometry. So we need to load, as I said, a topology. Uh, I presented you, you know, the, the different topologies available in SOFA. And you have, of course, different kind of uh, formats defining those different topologies. You're maybe more convenient with some of them, depending on the, if you are more on the mechanical side or inform, of informatic, uh, informatic guide, depending on, on who you are. Or here you can also load, as I said, you know, diagram images. But let's focus here on mechanics. Uh, so we are going to here load a mesh OBG. So it's a mesh OBG loader. So we are going to load an OBG file. Uh, and to this OBG file, we are here associ uh, associating here an OGL model. So if we just run this very simple scene without nothing, what's going to happen? So nothing, because there is no solvers. There is nothing. But we see here a geometry. So again, very nice. Uh, I, 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 I would again maybe pro to propose to stop the presentation, but you, you, you wouldn't be satisfied. So let's go a bit further again. Now we, are, we, we know how to load a geometry. We know to, how to you know, run a simulation. It was with one point, but it's not very different with a whole object. So we have the solvers, the mass, the mechanical object here, defining your, the degrees of freedom of your object. Let's make a bit, of, a bit of space in it. And what, what we are adding here, that's what, what we will see in this, uh, in this file. So there is two components, the mesh OBG loader, loading the topology, the mesh, which is actually defining the topology, uh, uh, storing all the topology information of your, of your object. The mechanical object, this time, there is no, not only one node, there is several nodes, but to know where the mechanical object need, needs to recover this information, we are linking, so you know, uh, linking this information directly to the, the information that we just loaded in the loader. So we are using the loader as a source of information for the mechanical object to load all the degrees of freedom information that we need for our object. And then, because it's, in, it's entitled internal forces, so I will tell a, a, I will tell a, a bit about the internal forces. Let's say that we want to make, to, to make a, a, a mass spring model in this simulation. So we'll add here a component, uh, what is called in so far a force field, defining here it's not, a, I would say, completely a constitutive law. It's, it's a physical representation of the object, uh, defining springs between, uh, uh, between each, uh, each point of the mesh. And you can define the stiffness here, damping, and so on. And we still have the mass of the object. So what's going to happen here if we, if we, if we run the simulation? Uh, so the object will fall. So if yeah, yeah, so it, it's disappearing because it's getting outside from the bounding box of the visualiza visualization. But maybe 
Yeah, so basically, the, the object is falling. You have, uh, you have a, a, a mechanical low uh, 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 defined here. But it's basically just you know fall, falling down and just uh, so we, we cannot really interact with it. So if we want to stop this object uh, from falling and having a possibility to, to see it for, for example, really deforming under, under the graffiti or or if we want to interact with it, we need to add boundary conditions to, to this model. Meca the, me the mechanical guy will, will be uh, aware of that kind of stuff when you are making simulation. You, you need some boundary condition or, or on, your, on your model. And in that case here, we will define the box. So that's a component called box array, which enables us to recover the point of a specific region and then say that those points are going are gonna to be fixed. So what's going to happen if we, are, if we run this simulation, we see the big, nice uh, pink, uh, pink, boy, pink box uh, defining which point we want to we wanna fix. And then if we run the simulation, we see here the, the object moving under the effect of, gra of gravity uh, in the simulation. So based uh, on, on the, on, on the, on the say, mechanical properties we defined here, and we can even here interact with the with the model with the mouse. So that's that's the first step. We have one object with boundary conditions, with uh, mechanical properties on it, with which we can interact. Uh, but we can uh, we can even go a, a, a bit further because that's one model. We can have different kind of models. You know, there is many uh, mechanical models, for example, uh, available and uh, many kind of representation. We saw the triangles, the hexahedral, uh, the hexahedra. There is many different kind of representation, and for those, you can, you can have also different kind of, of, of models. So, which is very well known, and that's, uh, I would say, the, the main, historically, the, the, the main, the, the main uh, focus of SOFA, it was FEM-based approaches. So, um, you, you can have, for example, based on the tetrahedron, tetrahedrals, and hexahedra. Topology. So here is the case for, for example, uh, tetrahedra. What what is, what's just changed with the with the previous uh, with the previous scene is just this component here. You see, it's just the uh, the name that changed, tetrahedron FEM force field, and uh, and and basically that's uh, th and that's it. So we just changed from a mesh spring force field where we define springs between each nodes to. Uh, a, a mesh, so which is made of tetrahedra. The mesh is de still defined by the uh, in the OBG file here. So the OBG file is including uh, including tetrahedra, and we are loading them, and we just change here this component. So in the same way, we we can just replace uh, tetra uh, tetrahedra with hexahedra. Just here we add a regular grid to show that you know from a regular grid we are then generating hexahedra. And, and making the simulation on it. Uh, so you have different kind of other representation so far. So let's just move on, on this example. So that's uh, the example of previously here, just one rigid body. Here the hexahedra. Here uh, the mesh spring uh, that we that we just saw previously, and here a tetrahedral mesh. Uh, so here FEM, FEM, and here mesh. Uh, so mass spring, mass spring model, and we are running the simulation. Here, of course, the point is basically just falling because there is no boundary condition on it, so it's just falling under the effect of, gra uh, of gravity. And here, you see all the different representations uh, of uh, uh, all the different, I would say, mechanical models uh, running in the same simulation very easily. We have, we have just here, for those three components, three nodes uh, describing the, those, uh, those different objects, just like we saw here. So you have more or less three times this node here uh, describing the FEM XR, FEM Tetra, and, and, and the, uh, the mass spring, uh, mass spring model. So on this, uh, the, so we saw here, you know, the tetrahedra and so on. But if we want to add some 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 visual, so so uh, a more advanced visual uh, visual model, it won't be uh, a lot advanced. But you will see here what we what we need to add here is it's a node in which we are including an OGL model here. So the OGL model, it's, uh, it's just the visualization of your object. And what you can notice here is that we are loading exact, exactly the same mesh as here. And if we run the simulation, the simulation of this scene here, what's, what's going to happen? 
the visualization is not moving at all because we, I, I told you, you remember of, of the torus in the exhydra? What, what was needed to couple the visualization with the FEM, I would, I, would, I would say with the mechanical model, was a mapping. And here, in this node, there is no mapping. Then, of course, we are just loading the visualization, so, so the OGL model, but the OGL model does not, does not have any kind of information to really know how it has to move. So we need to add an additional component that's a mapping that is go that's going to really make the connection between the mechanics and the visualization, so the different representations that I talked about previously. So we can we can see the we can see this uh, this simulation running. So with this additional uh, mapping, yeah, I'm going to fast for friends. <laughs> and here you see the very nice torus, very nice advanced visualization of torus, uh, moving accordingly uh, depending on the so. On, on, depending on the simulation which is which is done, so on the on the exa uh, on the exa chitra and and mass spring model. Of course, you can add unsimulated object, but I would say uh, it's a bit uh, crappy compared to what we we, we just we just did. It, it makes no no point. We just need to load an object, and if you load an object without any solvers, or if you load it, you add a solver, but there is no mass. Nothing will happen, so you, you see, I think you see what I mean, but basically you can add unsimulated objects. But what would be nice, for example, is to, uh, at the end of the previous presentation, I just talked about collision. If we, want to, if we want to add collision here on that scene, it won't be actually a very, uh, a very big effort. What, what you need to add is uh, a here, a here different components, four components describing how the collision detection will be down, uh, will, will be proceeded and will, will be done in SOFA. Uh, first, your collision pipeline, uh, then the way, the way you are going to detect, uh, 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 detect the, the collision, handle the, the, um, uh, sorry, the, the uh, handle the narrow phase, and then handle the, the response of your collision. So that's the, descri the description which is done here. And then, based on that, what, what you just need to add on each of your object is the, the, the representation used for collision. So if you want to have collision using triangles, you just need to add this line here, triangle, and based on the topology that you used here, you will, the, the simulation will extract the triangles and use them for the collision detection. And I think if there is and if there if there is no if there is no triangles here in the simulation, the you, you will have to add a mapping again to couple the collision representation with the mechanical one. So what we are going to see here, so that's uh, that's a triangular meshes uh, from from each of, of those objects. That's the the, the three tor uh, the the three torus here. Uh, there is four, so there, there might be some, okay. That's that's the three uh, three torus plus a rigid one uh, uh, that we that we just saw previously that are just linked together, but thanks to this uh, thanks to, to this collision component here triangle, there will be a collision detection of between each object, and you will see so you, you, you can you can run the simulation here and you will see all the different models so that have different representations. Some of them are exa, some of, some of them our uh, TITRA uh, uh, FEM model for the deformation, but for the collision, they do have all the same, they have all the same represent, uh, representation, so triangular, triangular representation for the collision detection. So you can see here the, the different, uh, yeah, the visualization of the, of, of the collision, uh, collision computation, collision simulation. So, and of course, then we talked a bit about uh, visualization, but we can go a bit further and, and, and make, you know, add shadows, light, and shaders. Uh, Fred could, could talk uh, more about that uh, than I do. Uh, but yeah, you, you can, uh, you, you, there is uh, shaders already defined in SOFA that you can directly use uh, that, that are then gonna, gonna make your simulation uh, look uh, amazingly beautiful. Uh, so again, these very nice stories, then you can simulate them using uh, shadows, you can, uh, you can uh, or you can, you can, yeah, you can add any kind of 
shadow 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 models uh, that you want to that you want to use. So of course all, all, the, all of them are and for, from far not uh, not already implemented in SOFA. There there is a there, there is way to do that. So th th that that was yeah. I will go very short on that because then there will be examples as I said mentioned in Python. Uh, you you can you can basically build a scene, as I said, using XML, but you can also, in the same way, define all the different components using, using Python and create your own scene using Python. The advantage, the advantage of Python would be that, as I, as I mentioned in the first part, the, really the dynamic and interact, interactive part uh, of, of Python, where you can interactively add new objects in the scene, which, which was not uh, easily possible in, in the past uh, using just uh, the C++ code and, and, and the XML files. And if I may, uh, in Python you can also like, uh, have a procedural way of, uh, like instead of uh, defining all the, the torus, if you have the same torus, you can uh, like uh, do a loop and create your object. Yeah. So uh, instead of writing all your XML, you write uh, one loop and uh, create all the torus. So and so yeah the, yeah this uh, and that's a last a very last example uh, very basic uh, just using one of the uh, of the plugin uh, um, using different plugins that, that we are uh, developing and here the idea is just to show that you can you can have multi physics in the simulation you can have deformation in the same time than thermal thermal evolution of temperature or, or any kind of potential uh, in the in, in your in your object so that's what we're gonna, gonna see in the, yeah, good. And, and, and here, what is defined is that as soon as it touches the floor, it's gonna eat the object. So you see, and that's, that, that is made very easily. Uh, so the, the, the XML file is really, really short. And, and again, it's, it's possible thanks to this kind of representation, you know, where you can have separately in the same scene mechanics, heat transfer, and linked, uh, and find find a way to link them together, and to have really a real multi-physics uh, simulation, uh, um, uh, yeah, in 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 a, in a few lines of uh, XML. So thank you for your attention for this first part. If you have any question, do not ask, hesitate to ask them. There is a website. Use it. There will be other presentations. So so you you will discover more about Sofa. But if you have already question about that uh, about this first part, again, do not hesitate.